Hi everyone, I'm Gustav Söderström, Chief R&D Officer. I lead the R&D team at Spotify, overseeing all product and technology for both creators and listeners. Daniel just walked through our history and evolution over the last few years, and he also talked about Spotify's future. So now, I'd like to take you even deeper into that future from a product point of view. As you just heard, our business model is indeed quite complex, but fortunately, user research shows us that the Spotify listener experience is actually quite the opposite. It's simple. So to listeners, there is nothing complex about it. And that's why my team exists, to hide that complexity and give users a single intuitive experience that brings them all the world's audio in a relevant and personalized way. Today, I want to walk you through that single user experience and what assumptions and decisions we made that are different from most other companies, and why this approach allows us to evolve, adapt, and scale across multiple content verticals. I'll then explain how we optimize the whole experience across these verticals, using machine learning in a manner that I think is quite unique to Spotify. But let's start with the consumer experience and the bet we made, a bet which has proven to be successful over the last few years. For context, most tech media companies don't operate multiple consumer models nor multiple business models. They typically have a single consumer format like video or music or podcast that's paired with a single business model like subscription or ads or a la carte. Only a few companies operate more than one consumer format, often in separate apps or tabs, and as separate internal business lines, ultimately creating totally separate experiences. This approach sort of exposes the internal complexity of the company and its business lines to the end user. It, it asks the user to adapt to the software instead of the software just adapting to the user. At Spotify, we chose to do it differently. As Daniel alluded to, when we entered podcast, we were strongly advised to follow the status quo. And instead of creating an integrated app, we would create a standalone podcast app. Because that would be easier for us as product and design people. But we asked ourselves, why should the user have to adapt to the format by switching software Shouldn't the software adapt to the user? So that's what we built, an adaptive user experience. Practically, this meant that we, we integrated podcasts into Spotify's main app. And then we worked to build a user experience and interface that automatically adapts to introduce new podcasting features dynamically that music doesn't require. These could be features like a 15 second skip, episode bookmarks, or adjustable playback speed. And this was harder for us as a technical challenge to build this dynamic UX, where the same home feed, the same search, and the same now playing view automatically adapt to the content type. But we quickly saw that this approach was not only easier for the user, it also increased the reach for all creators, meaning that podcast creators could now reach music listeners and music creators could now reach podcast listeners. So the value that this brought to users and creators outweighed the challenge it presented to our team. We also quickly re recognized that this strategy unlocked significant business value. First, it gives us the ability to leverage our scale and distribution. New creators on our platform are able to access the entire combined user base across all the formats. And this drastically expands the market for these creators, as Daniel explained. Secondly, it also allows us to use our existing infrastructure when we're laddering up into new verticals, not just on the back end, like personalization, but also on the front end in the actual application. And finally, it increases engagement and lifetime value on our existing users as they also adopt these new formats. First, let's look at scale and distribution.
From day one, this single user experience strategy enabled podcasters on Spotify to tap into the existing music audience, which at that time was already 200 million listeners, instead of what would have been zero listeners in a standalone app. Thanks to our tech research teams, we were even able to take Spotify's much-loved personalization features and adapt them to podcasting in a way that, that predicted which podcast a user might like based on their music preferences. We also learned that podcasts didn't cut in to music listening time, but instead actually increased overall time spent on the platform, ultimately allowing us to double down on our own user engagement. This meant that Spotify wasn't simply competing for a slice of the existing, and honestly back then rather small, podcast pie. Instead, we were able to dramatically expand the entire market for podcasts. And as a result, we eventually became a leader in the space. Since then, we've added more and more functionality to this adaptive user experience and software to make it more and more versatile. It can now automatically adapt to video podcasts with you know, the full screen caption controls that that format requires, which again allowed us to start with what is now 300 million potential video viewers instead of zero in a separate video app. And then we added paid podcasts as another format, like with uh, Sam Harris or Ben Thompson. Again, letting them start at scale instead of in a separate paid podcast app somewhere. This integration of free and paid formats is not only good for Spotify and for consumers, it is also great for creators as it helps them reach and convert their free podcast audience to paid subscribers seamlessly and effectively. Now, this is obviously the same freemium model that Spotify itself already uses, but for each individual creators. And now we're taking those learnings and laddering up into a new vertical with yet another content format, the audiobook. This means that we're identifying and introducing new features that podcast listening and music doesn't require. On the surface, this might seem simple, as audiobooks are a lot like podcasts, but there are critical differences. For example, audiobooks have chapters, not episodes, so you will always want to listen in chapter order instead of to the latest episode. And while well, you might want a recommendation for episode 10 of a podcast you've never heard of because maybe it talks about a specific guest or topic you like, you probably don't want a recommendation for chapter 10 of an audiobook you've never heard of. Does that make any sense? Instead of asking the user to switch apps or tabs or software, we've taken on the task of integrating audiobooks into the same Spotify user experience. Again, optimizing for the user. This allows us to take what is today a relatively small market of audiobook listeners paying a la carte and expose it to more than 400 million potential listeners. We can also, again, use our powerful tools that tell us what podcasts you like to determine what kind of audiobooks you might want to listen to. For example, fiction, nonfiction, mind-bending mysteries, or educational science or something. And these tools help us make relevant recommendations to people who have never listened to an audiobook before. This is another example of how this single experience strategy not only helps listeners easily discover, but also helps drastically expand and increase the reach of creators into new customer segments. As we continue to adapt across content verticals, let me show you what this single multi-format feed will look like that includes music, podcasts, video, and audiobooks. OK, so I've now shared how we think of Spotify as a scalable infrastructure that allows us, creators, and consumers to systematically benefit from our previous investments as we enter new verticals, like audiobooks. A very important part of that infrastructure is, of course, our personalization engine, which is shared among all of our content formats. Investments in this space allow for the personalization engine to get better and better as new formats are added, ultimately giving us a better understanding of every user 
and how we recommend to them. To a large extent, the value of a service like Spotify is directly related to how much a consumer feels like that service helps them discover new things. So I want to spend some time on this area specifically. Users tell us that Spotify's recommendations fit them perfectly, that it's almost like magic. We've been investing in this recommendation engine since the early days of music. Now we've reached a level where we can provide a personalized and unique experience for every listener. And in music, we are honored to be considered best in class. We're already utilizing this infrastructure to support the same individualized experience across podcasts to build a better understanding of what you, as individual consumers, really want to listen to across both of these verticals. It works for music, it works for podcasting, and we know it will work across all verticals. So what we've built is something that's repeatable, scalable, and that compounds. Let's look at some numbers. Four years ago, we had 10 billion artist discoveries every month on Spotify. Today, there are 22 billion of them. And this is an exciting data point, because we know that discoveries lead to real connections between artists and listeners, which is what ultimately drives value for those creators. Nearly 2 billion artist discoveries turn into connections, which we define as a degree of fandom. This helps artists increase their fan base, their reach, and ultimately the success trajectory of their careers. On the podcasting side, over 100 million connections were made between users and new podcast hosts. And nearly half of those were driven by our recommendations or programming. While our strategy on the front end is a single seamless consumer experience, on the back end, we're taking the opposite approach, recognizing that each format, music, podcasting, and audiobooks, has different creator needs, audience expectations, and business models. And this is why, on the back end, we've chosen to build distinct and separate software stacks and teams, deeply integrated into these different industries and optimized for each creator group and business. Let me bring back up the visual of the Spotify machine that Daniel mentioned. Now, in music, for example, the business model is based on the stream share of a royalty pool that requires massive custom integrations towards labels and publishers and so forth. Podcasting, on the other hand, is a very different business model, driven mostly by advertising and direct creator upload, such as to Anchor. And audiobooks is yet another distinct creator group with yet another dominant business model today, a la carte, where users pay per item. So it requires more custom software integration to support the publishing industry, like the audiobook company Findaway, which Daniel mentioned earlier. As you can see, on the back end, we've taken different and complex business verticals, and we're approaching them individually to deliver the best creator experience, tools, and business opportunities for each industry and creator group. In just a moment, we'll give you a deeper look at these three verticals we've been building out. But before I hand it over, I hope you'll take away a few key ideas on our overall product approach. First, our strategy to adopt a single consumer experience enables us to accelerate our entry into new vertical and formats. This allows us and creators to capitalize on a compounding user base rather than several separate ones. Second, Behind the scenes, our strategy is to build dedicated backends that super serve separate industries, different business models, and different creator groups. This enables us to both power the world's biggest music creator stack today, the world's biggest podcast creator stack, and soon, hopefully, the world's biggest audiobook creator stack. Finally, as we add new verticals into our single consumer experience, we continuously increase the lifetime value and retention of our existing users as well. Now we're going to hear more about the music vertical, but let me first leave you with a quick clip of how Spotify connects artists to fans.
There's never any growth from being comfortable. Any one artist can release that one song that changes their life forever on Spotify. Spotify helps us reach fans around the world. You guys are doing all the hard work to spread our music. The data analytics that Spotify provide gives you a conversation to have with promoters. And that's all you need. Spotify Canvas gave me a way to share like a digital sketchbook. Spotify paid out more than seven billion US dollars to the music industry in 2021. Yeah, that's kind of cool, right? Our goal is for Spotify to be the place where you not only build a fan base, but also build a business. With Spotify, it's easier for a new artist to be heard. This is like where I recorded my first stuff. I was like, no one's gonna see this. And I posted it. <laughs> it's been going off since then. <laughs> it was like that defining moment in my life. Spotify put it on a lot of key playlists. That just means that my music is getting out there and people know who I am. I love Spotify. It became an addiction to me to check numbers every day. For a new talent, it's life-changing. 